Hi everybody. This is a short introduction to give you an idea of what Wicked Workshop is all about and really just how to approach the projects within my classes. If you haven't ever taken a Wicked Workshop class in person, this will sort of help you to have the right mindset and you'll know where I'm coming from in terms of what the expectations are and really what you guys should be thinking as you're working on these projects. So I've always felt like I do a better job if I know sort of where I'm headed and so I wanted to provide that for you. So here we go. It's always a good idea to kind of know where you're headed and what you're jumping toward. Kind of what your end result wants to be. I'm not saying that surprises aren't a good thing. They most certainly are a good thing. But some things could go better if you understand the overall plan before you jump in too deep. For example, if you're on a swim team, your goal is to get to the other side of the pool faster than anyone else. But there's lots of ways to go about winning that race, right? So first, you have to come prepared. You have to have the right tools. A swimsuit might be a good idea. You have to practice probably more than just one little time. And you might want to get an overall sense of what it's like to be part of a team. So that's just one example. Making stuff in Wicked Workshop is no different. It's really important that you know what Wicked Workshop is all about and that means that you need to know just a little bit about the design process. So let's say you're the architect and you've been hired to design a brand new skyscraper for the biggest city in the world. Or, okay, maybe you've been asked to design a small house for a family right down the street. It doesn't really matter because the design process is all the same. So one of the first things that you're going to do is immediately panic because you have no ideas. What am I supposed to make? What am I supposed to do? You're absolutely not going to panic. The design process is just as it sounds. It's a process. So the first step in the design process is idea making. Good ideas, sadly, don't just magically appear out of thin air and in a big, giant, momentary burst of creative genius. But lucky for us, they can come from anywhere, even the good ideas. So ideas can come from your own experience. Your ideas can come from your own memories. They come from stories you've been told, streets you've walked down, places you've visited, dreams you've had, and hobbies that you have an interest in. So my point is that you always bring something unique to your own projects, even if you don't realize it. Ideas also come from research. Finding out more about the place that your building will go is always a good idea. You might visit other places that relate to your project. You might take pictures. You might record your ideas in a sketchbook. And my favorite idea for making space, embracing the random. We encounter random ideas every day and architecture is no different. Your client may be a typewriter enthusiast who collects typewriters. Maybe they have 40 typewriters sitting in their house. That is pretty random, but it also might give you some inspiration. You might like the colors. You might like the shape of the keys. You might like the mechanical look of it. And I'm willing to bet if your client loves typewriters enough to collect them, then he or she would probably be interested in a design inspired by them. So embracing the random all around can be a great path to a new idea. Ideas also come from what I call the hive. So all the people around you. Talking to people is always good in the idea making stage. So you get my point. Ideas are everywhere once you start looking for them. This part of the design process is just the beginning. We can try all sorts of ideas out until we come up with one that seems to work. After that, we explore the idea some more, and if it all goes well, we start to refine the idea and add more details. So 
It may seem like this process is a bit of a game, and it is. It's kind of a game between drawing and making, and we go back and forth to explore ideas and improve our design. And after lots of back and forth, once we have a final design, then it's finally time to move on to the building phase and the building gets made. So many of you who do know a little something about building construction recognize that I skipped over a lot. And you're right, I did skip over a lot. And I did that because here in Wicked Workshop, we focus on the very beginning of the design process, just the idea making part. It's like the very first itty bitty part of the whole thing. So first things first, in Wicked Workshop, I don't offer step-by-step -step instructions on how to build stuff. I will give you a lot of background, a situation, and a ton of inspiration, as much as I can find. And then I'll set you up with materials and you go after that idea. That's the important part. You're gonna go at it yourself. You'll start the process, you'll figure out how to match that idea in your head to the materials in front of you, and even how to match all of that with what you can make with your hands. And remember, the older you get, the more you'll be able to make. It's not always easy, by the way, and it does take time, and it does usually take more than one try. This part of the design process is the most important, but it's also the most fun. This is the moment where all good ideas become great ideas. Anything goes. Bring out those rubber chicken feet. Go find that chopped up pretzel. Find something that will inspire you and make things fun. There are no rules when it comes to creativity, especially at this first stage. So, what if you hit a snag? What if your design just doesn't look good? What if you can't make it fit together? What if it won't stand up? You might be the type that gets angry or sad, and that's totally okay. You might be the type that just walks away and quits. That's also okay too. My advice? Seriously, take a break. Take a break. And then just get back at it. Get comfortable with being uncomfortable. And what I mean by that is to know that designing something from nothing can be hard. It can also be easy, but it can be hard. So it's crazy fun to push past that feeling and go ahead and make something awesome. I like to remind kids that everything around you has been designed. The desk at your school, the radio in your car, the toilet seat in your bathroom. Yes, that's right, the toilet seat in your bathroom. Everything has been designed. And I can guarantee you that we're not looking at somebody's first idea. What we always see is the finished product. We miss all the hard work that it took to get there. And really, think about it. A book is a great example. We all see that beautiful book on the bookshelf, printed nicely on good paper with a beautiful color cover. That book took years and years to write and rewrite and rewrite again. So remember, Wicked Workshop is about step one, the idea making phase. So as you play around with this project, I want you to do the best you can Take it seriously, have a great time, explore your crazy ideas, and have some fun with it. All that other stuff, it all comes later. The idea part is what we're doing here. So that's what we're gonna focus on. Okay, so there you have it. That gives you an idea of sort of where we're coming from and how to approach these Wicked Workshop problems. There's one more thing that I wanted to say, and if your parents are listening, they're going to be like, what did I hear her say? Here's what it is. Lower your expectations. And what I mean by that is I'm not saying don't expect anything of yourself. But what I am saying is for those perfectionists out there who really think that everything needs to be right the first time or the second time, what I want you to do is make that go away. So... I want you to think about what's happening. I'm giving you a project, you've never seen it, you've never done any research on it, it's all brand new. 
I may be giving you materials that you've never seen, never worked with, or you may be collecting your own materials that you've never worked with. So when you're experimenting and inventing, there's no good space for perfectionism. So this is, remember, the very first part of the idea process, idea making process. So you don't want to harbor yourself you don't want to weigh yourself down with all of that perfection stuff. So just make it go away. Lower your expectations. So I cannot wait to see what you make. Have a great time with these projects. Remember the way that you should create is a loose, fluid, wonderful, free process. Have a great time and I can't wait to see what you make.